Hi guys, how's it going? All right. I came across this uh, audio and I was uh, listening to it yesterday and it was it's, it's really deep. It's really deep. This guy, he was born in uh, Afghanistan. So, uh, after listening to this like, you know, many things came into my mind too. And uh it's it's, it's, it's kind of unique. It's a very unique video, but the answer to his question is really really deep and uh, i'm sure only intelligent minds can understand and i hope you're one of them all right so enjoy chill and uh, let me know in the comments what do you think about this and please share like and subscribe thank you when i see you is it the spirit part of me talking through me to me through Esther or is it Esther Abraham explaining my brother brother for it? well it is some of both but the inner part of you cannot help but be intertwined with the inner part of Esther but the bigger question is in your physical count Esther right now because of her practice because of her practice of high vibration and she's not always there but she is right now because of her practice of meditation Esther is at the frequency that we are that's why she can translate so easily what we are wanting to convey as you are sitting here and conversing you have that option too sometimes when someone sits here it just happened they are up to speed with who they are and so the conversation is one of uh, connection tuned in tapped in turned on so we can't answer that question as a constant we we have said lovingly and playfully to our physical friends your connection to who you are is not like a college degree where once you achieve it it is yours forevermore it either is or it isn't in the moment and you can tell by the way you feel whether that is happening so you would be able to describe that sometimes people will sit down and they will say I'm so nervous and so it is our first order of business to put them at ease because we know that if we are able to help them find ease that then the communication will happen more from both being at the same vibrational frequency from one way when I see things around me it's uh, making me kind of excited and scared and I can't believe it how it will be possible that things around would could speak to me well we can't believe how it could be possible that you would not always remember that but we know that we know that Esther was sitting at the on the airplane a very small airplane yesterday looking out at the tarmac and the other airplanes and she noticed that everything out there had no color and then she shifted her eyes and full color came back into the spectrum and then she shifted her eyes another way and there was no color and then she shifted her eyes another way and there was full color in the spectrum and it's the first time she's ever had the experience where she was looking through her eyes at the exact same thing and seeing color and then no color color and then no color you are the interpreter of vibration through your eyes you see and you have the ability to see with these eyes things that you don't often or commonly see with these eyes so um, sorry thanks Jerry for his conversation with me yeah and his kindness yeah and I see Esther's as well yeah with all this beauty one thing which really annoying me well I still don't understand it with all this amazing thing why why I should be born I'm not I'm not saying something against that it was a beautiful form of life that I born in Afghanistan yeah and there it was amazing life that nobody will ever imagine it yeah. until they born there and see it yeah. but I know I was born in that situation for this transaction to happen but it was so much painful that from the age of 12 my once they find out that I was not one of similar on the same path 
One of my sisters will hold me from this hand and one of my sisters from this hand and my mother, who was a little bit look like Esther, would beat me. To, and, and it was not for one day. It was for years. In the end, they handed me over to these Al-Qaeda, which you guys call them a terrorist. And, and they trained me with those fear and, and anger for the rest of the, you know, those life which will trouble me to the rest of my life, and I don't know if I could ever come out of it. So what was the meaning of this life? Why should I choose such a shit life? Sorry for this word to say it. Because I was not came here to teach anybody something, or I don't know. Um, the, well, this, this, this piece, is, it bugged me to pieces. This answer is going to feel trite to you not a big enough answer for this big question at first. But in the same way that when you are an athlete, you are always reaching for an environment where the most can be focused within you. In other words, if you are a tennis champion, you're not wanting to play with beginners. And even as a tennis champion, you're wanting to play with the best of them because you are wanting to rise to increasing levels of understanding and accuracy and exhilaration. So powerful teachers often come forth into environments that are adverse because out of that discomfort comes newfound desire. And once you are able to focus Purely, you said you don't think you'll ever come out of it, but you will. Purely upon the desires that you hold. Not pushing back against what you have lived, but understanding that who you now are, magnificent, is a byproduct of what you lived. Then off you go into what you really came forth to live. Esther discovered her first discomfort. Now, unlike you, she was born into a loving home. Nobody beat her. Her mother got the hairbrush out once and everyone laughed. <laughs> In other words, there was no abuse of any kind. When Esther met Jerry, Jerry described a lot of physical and mental abuse from the early years. And yet Esther marveled that here they came together later in their lives, both of them at the same powerful place of wanting, very different exposure to life experience. And so unlike you, who very early in your life have come through the pain and into something more understanding or knowing, Esther discovered her great discord and discomfort very late in life with Jerry's reemergence into non-physical. In other words, she would have said to you prior to that, that she was unwilling to live anything that uncomfortable ever. She could see no possible value in anything that felt like that. But today she would not say those same words because even though it is something completely unwanted and by her estimation, utterly unnecessary, she has come to a stronger, clearer place and ultimately like you will come through it completely into understanding all about it. So generally speaking, if you can accept that nothing is for nothing, that everything is for something. You said, what lesson did I have to learn? What is it about? And we say, no one's teaching you a lesson but you came forth with powerful intention to come to a place of understanding, you see. Esther said, and this may soothe you, Esther said early in her interaction with us, and she would not have moved forward at all with it if it had not been for Jerry's eagerness about it, because Esther found it weird <laughs> and unsettling in terms of how others may feel about it. But she said to us, we, we explained to her on many occasions that there wasn't anything that she was assigned to do. It wasn't something that she was meant to do. In other words, 
desire is inspired from alignment you see and when you come into alignment and that desire is inspired then it always feels right there's not something that has been assigned to you and Esther said to us Abraham once she got to know us and got to understand Jerry was asking such good questions and we were explaining about law of attraction and the the process of deliberate creation and the art of allowing and Esther said Abraham do you expect me to tell this to the world and we said no sweet Esther we are just telling you and that's what we want you to understand too in other words this life experience is the life experience that you set into motion you didn't come into your physical body into that what you described as extraordinary place not understanding what would be unfolding it wasn't an accident it wasn't a mistake it wasn't bad karma it was powerful deliberate intent from a powerful genius creator who wanted to come into an environment where you could garner plenty of contrasting experience and launch so many powerful rockets early on in your experience so that later you could figure out how to come into alignment with who you are in order to receive the fullness of all of those questions you see will the world benefit from what you know from who you are from what you come to be no question about it but it's your call every step of the way you see our work with you is to assist you into coming into alignment with who you are and every process that we ever offer is about that and only that because we know it's not our job to tell you what's in your vortex and it's not our job to assign the the details of your grid your point of attraction it is only our job to assist you in coming into full alignment with who you are because we understand that then all that you intended before you were born and all that you've garnered ever since will flow into your experience in the form of never-ending ideas and impulses you see it is not your role to push against anything that your birth country is about it's not your job it's not your job to defend them or to condemn them it is your job to live happily ever after it is your job to come into vibrational alignment with who you are it is your job to come into harmony with all that you were before you were born and all that you evolved to ever since you see and it is our pleasure to let you know that all of that stuff that certainly you didn't want to live all of it has contributed mightily to what's in your vortex and as you begin more and more to consciously allow yourself to achieve vibrational harmony with who you are and as those ideas flow into your experience you will not have one regret about one of those beatings first of all because they're not happening now second of all because they were never about what you thought they were about in other words the most significant thing that happened with all of that and you know this for sure within every one of those experiences you knew for sure that you weren't wrong didn't you you always knew that you weren't wrong in other words they were never able to beat you into submission into believing that you had no worth or no value you always knew that was a powerful integral part of who you are you see that's the most powerful part of this message you see thank you for bringing me here <laughs> have fun with all of this <laughs> <laughs>